uh, in this uh, lecture, uh, you will learn about the factors that alter the composition of an equilibrium mixture. And uh, one of the objective uh, to study these uh, different parameters or the different factors. So one of the your principal goal or the main objective of the chemical synthesis is to maximize the conversion of reactants to product. Actually, direction are uh, because you are doing some sort of the reactions with the intention to get the more products. So actually these factors will help you to understand how to maximize the concentration of the product during the reaction. And other one is how can you minimize the expenditure of the energy? That means you will give minimum energy and get the maximum output in the form of the products. And the, these are our, the, uh, our objective to study the factors that alter the composition of an equilibrium mixture. And this objective can easily achieved if the reaction goes nearly to the completion at mild temperature and the pressure. So mild temperature and pressure, that means you want to minimize the expenditure and uh, towards the completion, that means you are having a more products as compared to the reactant. So these are the objectives. Based on these objectives, we will discuss some of the factors uh, with some practical examples that uh, how uh, or what would be the effect of concentration of the reactants or the products, what would be the effect of temperature, uh, so pressure and the volume, what would be the effect of temperature and the catalyst. So these are the uh, few of the factors that are going to alter the composition of an equilibrium mixture. So in this lecture, I will just explain one of them and uh, then we will discuss in the next lectures. So this is going to be explained based on the Lichatry principle. And this is very simple principle. That means if a stress is applied to a reaction mixture at equilibrium, because you have already equilibrium, and when you apply a stress at the equilibrium, then the net reaction occurs in the direction that relieves the stress. That means whatever you have applied the stress, it is going to be relieved uh, to achieve the another condition of the equilibrium. And this is called the Lichatry principle. And here, what does it mean the stress? In this meaning is the change in concentration, change in pressure, change in volume, change in temperature that disturb the original equilibrium. So stress mean, all these are the factor we have actually, uh, uh, we have mentioned over here. All these are going to create a stress. And if you apply a stress, this stress should be relieved. And uh, we will discuss how can you relieve that stress by using the Lee-Chatrier principle. So the reaction then occurs to change the composition of the mixture until a new state of the equilibrium is achieved. Again, because you are starting and you are uh, uh, discussing the uh, equilibrium mixture, when you apply your stress, it should be achieved again the equilibrium condition to relieve that stress. And this is the Lichatry principle. So I am going to discuss only one of the uh, parameter or the factor and which is the changes in the concentration. So how the concentration are going to affect the equilibrium mixture and how the equilibrium is going to readjust to get the same value of the equilibrium constant. And uh, please be remember that the value of equilibrium constant is not going to change by changing the concentration of the reactants of the product. This should be remain the constant, only there should be a stress after the adding or after removal of the concentration of one of the reactant and the product. 
So look at this one example. This is the formation of the <coughs> ammonia uh, uh, by using the, the nitrogen gas and the hydrogen gas as the reactant. This is one uh, molecule of the nitrogen, three molecules of the hydrogen, and from the two molecule of the ammonia. And this is having the equilibrium constant of this reaction is 0 0.291 at 700 Kelvin. <clears throat> so carefully understand this one. So don't uh, again uh, 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 be a, uh, uh, to memorize all the things. Just I request you to understand the concept over here. So I am uh, explaining over here. Let's suppose this is the equilibrium condition, initial equilibrium. That means the concentration of uh, <clears throat> this one is the uh, three molar concentration, moles per liter. Ammonia is two molar concentration. And this is uh, the uh, equilibrium concentration of the nitrogen. Uh, uh, one point, sorry, this is the less than, let's suppose this is the 0.5. So direction is at the equilibrium. That means when direction is at equilibrium, you can put the values of these concentration and you will get the value of the equilibrium constant 0.291. So I am just adding the, uh, I am going to, uh, to provide these tests at the reactant side with the addition of the nitrogen gas, if N2 is added at this point, and this was maintained at the equilibrium. And let's suppose this is 0 0.5. And when you add the concentration of the nitrogen, uh, that is going to increase from this point to the, this point. So let's suppose this is the almost, this is the 1.5. So what I have done over here, I have just changed the concentration of the nitrogen. That means I have <coughs> disturbed that equilibrium with the addition of the nitrogen gas. And that then the, the concentration of nitrogen is increased from 0.5 to 1.5. That means now that this reaction is not at the equilibrium. And if you want to get the value of the uh, this one, uh, the ratio of the product divided by the reactant, the, this must be the QC. So what is happened over here? So when you added the concentration of the nitrogen, it is reached up to this point. And of course, when you increase the concentration over here, then the stress is on the reactant side. So according to the leach atria principle, this stress should be relieved. And how it is relieved? Whatever you have added the concentration on the reactor side, the reaction proceed towards the product side, that means towards the forward direction. When it is moving towards the forward direction, that means with the passage of time, concentration of reactants are decreased and the concentration of the products is increased. And this is shown over here. So when you added the concentration of the nitrogen, the concentration of nitrogen is increased and then the reaction proceed with the passage of the time, the time is mentioned over here. With the passage of time, the concentration is decreased and the concentration of ammonia is increased. I have explained because the, this is ammonia and concentration of H2 is further decreased and then it would reach to the equilibrium when the forward reaction becomes equal to the backward reaction. And this is the new equilibrium. So look at the values actually, the concentration. This was the initial equilibrium. And when you applied the stress, this is the stress side in between these dotted line, this is the stress. And according to the Lichatry principle, this stress is relieved. When it is relieved, it achieved another equilibrium. And this equilibrium, after that, now look at the value of the concentration. Concentration of H2 is further decreased. Concentration of 
and two is decrease after the adding, but it is more than as compared to the initial because you have added the concentration, additionally added the concentration of nitrogen and the concentration of product, which is ammonia, this is also increased from the initial equilibrium. So this is the new equilibrium, this is the initial equilibrium. So I am I'm going to explain another way. Look at these values. So these are mentioned with the red and these are with the blue. So what I have done over here, I just increase the concentration of the nitrogen. So when the concentration of nitrogen increase, there is more stress on the reactive side. The reaction is proceed towards the forward action and the concentration of this is increased. So that means with the passage of time, the concentration of nitrogen is decreased. Concentration of, uh, uh, sorry, this is again, nitrogen, this is the hydrogen, okay? This is the hydrogen is decreased and this is the concentration of the ammonia that is increased. Again, you can keep any of the one. That line mean you can, uh, there is the same explanation if you are starting with this point, with this point, with this point. So I'm repeating over here. If you increase the concentration of nitrogen or if you increase the concentration of hydrogen or if you decrease the concentration of ammonia, this is the, the same thing. There is no difference in the explanation. So by increasing the concentration of the reactant side or by decreasing the concentration on the product side, with the passage of time, these concentration decrease and the concentration of the ammonia will increase. So that means, again, if you increase the concentration uh, at the reactant side, the reaction proceed towards the product side, and if you decrease the, uh, uh, if you increase the concentration of the product side, then there is more stress on the product side. The reaction will proceed towards the backward action, and with the proceed towards the backward action with the passage of time, the concentration of ammonia decrease, and the these are going to be increased. Let's have a look on the practical example. This is the same. Uh, uh, reaction I have explained before. What was the condition uh, before uh, at the equilibrium 1.9, 0.5 and 3? Look at the value. This, this was the 0.5 and uh, the exact are given over here. 1.95, almost 2, 0.5 and 3. This is 3, this is 1.98 and this is 0.5. This was the initial equilibrium. And when you put the value and get the answer, the answer is 0.29. That means this is the Kc. And because this is the value of uh, this Kc is 0.291. So uh, what I have done in the previous case, I increased the concentration 0.5 to 1.5. Only nitrogen is added. So what is happening? This will remain the same. This will remain the same. Look at the value product uh, uh, concentration and the concentration of hydrogen is the same, only the nitrogen is increased from 0.5 to 1.5. Now, when you put the value and solve uh, this one, you will get the answer point 0.0968. That means this is not the equilibrium constant value. And now this is the QC. And this is not Kc. And you can say that this Qc is less than the value of the Kc. And uh, in the previous uh, uh, lecture, we have already discussed in detail uh, this condition. And you can apply the same theory over here, but I am going to discuss with the some of the, the values which I have explained over here. Now, the Qc is less than the value of the Kc. So what is going to happen? Again, look at the value. The nitrogen concentration is decreased, ammonia is increased, and hydrogen is decreased. This is this was the case. You have increased the concentration of this one, 
with the passage of time, the concentration of reactant decrease and the concentration of ammonia is increased as shown by the arrow and shown over here. This is the same. So look at the values. This is the, this was the, our initial equilibrium. And after adding or after the addition of the nitrogen, now at the equilibrium concentration, this is increased because this is a product. These concentration decrease 1.5 to 1.31 and 3 to 2.43. And when you solve this one, you will get the answer 0.296. And this is the same, the equilibrium constant. So here you can say that this QC exactly it is actually the KC. So by using the calculation or by using the graph, you can explain the extent of the reaction. So as we have explained in the, uh, the first one, the objective is how can you maximize the, the concentration of the product by minimizing the energy. So this was the objective in any of the chemical industry or industrial reaction. And this was the answer actually, this will remain the same, but you can maximize the product. Look at the value. This product is 1.98, but with the addition of the nitrogen, now your product is 2.36. That means you can uh, increase the concent concentration of the product by altering the concentration of any of the reactant and the product because this will stop at the same value as the equilibrium constant is having. And uh, uh, this one is the one of the example. I'm going to end with this example uh, as I will explain uh, and I will ask in the examination in a similar, point, uh, similar way. That means if this is the reaction, so by using the Lichatry principle, you can predict the direction of the equilibrium. Then when you are adding the uh, Fe2O3 or removing the carbon dioxide or removing the carbon monoxide. So these are the reactant and products are given. So these three questions I have asked, let's solve one by one. So uh, I am solving over here, but keep in mind your own answer. Uh, so that if it is going to be different, then you can discuss with me your query after the this one lecture. So the first one is after the adding of EFE203. So what would be the, uh, the effect on the equilibrium after the addition of FE203? As I have already explained you, uh, 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 in the heterogeneous equilibrium, Fe2O3 is a solid and its concentration does not change when more Fe2 is added. Therefore, there is no concentration stress and the original equilibrium is undisturbed. That means there is no change in the equilibrium because the pure solid and the pure liquid is not going to alter the equilibrium constant and this is I have in discussed in detail in a separate lecture. Second was the, <clears throat> the question was the removing of carbon dioxide. So this was the carbon dioxide. If you remove this one, <clears throat> that means there is the more stress on the reactant side, the reaction is proceeding towards the product, uh, product side or to the, for the forward action. So this is explained over here. The Chattery principle predicts that the concentration stress of removed carbon dioxide will be relieved by the net reaction from left to right to replenish the carbon dioxide. How much you have removed, it is going to be recovered by moving the reaction from left to right or from right into the product side. The third question was, what will be the removing the carbon monoxide? If you remove this one, again, if you remove this one, there is more stress on the product side. So the reaction is moving towards the backward action. And this is explained over here. The Chattery principle I have asked uh, uh, to express this one with the value of QC. And again, look at the, the value. 
of QC or the KC. I have not mentioned the Fe203 over here because this is not going to change the equilibrium constant or the reaction question. So this is the QC and you can explain when the equilibrium is disturbed by reducing the carbon monoxide concentration. And that means this you are going to uh, decrease. If this is less, this will be more so that QC is increased. So QC is increased by reducing the concentration of the carbon monoxide. So in this case, QC is greater than KC. And when QC is greater than KC, the system is moved towards the new state of equilibrium and uh, QC must decrease as explained before, that is carbon dioxide must decrease and carbon monoxide must increase. Therefore, the net reaction goes from right to left as predicted by the Dichatrio principle. And this is, I have explained over here. Now, this is uh, our first factor and we will discuss the next factor in the coming class.